Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game with Decom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with AMD's Narve range of graphics cards. There have been an awful lot of developments concerning Narve over the past few days. There were the leaked benchmarks which have popped up online, which admittedly aren't the best for actually figuring out the performance of the GPU. After all, for a start, the core clock was only at 1000 MHz, which is certainly not a good indicator of final clock speeds, I imagine. And we also have other things such as a Sapphire representative accidentally telling us much more information than probably what he should have, including the launch date of the GPU being July the 7th. We expect a lot more details to be formalized by AMD during the Computex event, which of course takes place in just a few days. But there have been a few leaks concerning the architecture, or at least potential leaks, and these have emerged via Twitter from user Kamichi. Now I have actually written to Kamichi because he and I actually speak fairly regularly uh, in DMs and he has told me that they are from a friend of his, he's not going to provide any more details than that, and he thinks that uh, there's a possibility that they may be accurate but he's not 100% certain. So I want you to be aware that the user he has been in contact with typically provides him pretty good information, but he is not 100% confident that it is accurate, what I'm about to say. But even so, it makes sense in the larger scheme of things, because you might recall that uh, back in March, I released a video that detailed what Raja Kodori actually was tasked to do um, on Narve. So... During Rajar's uh, tenure as head of RTG, he was asked basically to release a variant of GCN, which obviously, as we all know, uh, Narve is GCN, it's a new iteration though, or, uh, and fix the issues that were plaguing the previous versions of GCN. So this uh, did not, uh, is not limited to, excuse me, but did include things such as geometry performance and pure pixel pushing power. So what the leaks we are seeing here seem to do is actually go some way to fix those particular issues. So what we've seen from the uh, leaked PCB as well as the general consensus among multiple leaks now is that Narve is using GDDR6 on a 256-bit memory bus, most likely over 14 or 16 GBPS memory modules. If I had to take a guess, it's going to be the 14 GBPS derivatives. After all, these particular cards are supposed to be targeting RTX 2070 and below in terms of performance. Okay, so now we're all caught up. What actually is the difference in the, un in the underlying architecture? Well, the larger Narve 10 appears to feature eight streaming engines and possibly double the ROPs compared to what we saw with the uh, previous Polaris architecture. The RX 480, for example, when it launched, had 32 ROPs. The 580, 590, they also have uh, 32 ROPs. So what we have here is 64 ROPs. So how have they achieved this? Well, we have 2,560 stream processors total in the GPU. And just like previous um, uh, iterations of GCN, each compute unit features 64 stream processors. But there is a, dis there is a couple of really important distinctions. The first of which is that each compute unit, SIMD, is now split into two, so it's two times 32. This means that not only uh, can you have smaller loads of work running on the GPU, I actually discussed this a lot back in the PS4 and PS4 Pro era, so I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. If not, you can probably search for it on the channel. And this basically means that the wave fronts themselves can be much smaller, which means you can schedule smaller amounts of work uh, and be a lot more efficient about that. But furthermore, in this particular schematic that has appeared online, what we have is eight shader engines. Now, each of these shader engines contains five, I'm going to repeat that, eight shader engines contains five compute units. Once again, there are 64 stream processors per compute unit. So if you do the math on that, 8 times 5 equals 40 times uh, 64 equals 2560 total. 
There are whispers online as well that there are some significant changes to and improvements to the cache as well, which should help to reduce uh, the latency on the GPU and access to main system memory, or rather the uh, GDDR6 memory, plus as well reduce the requirements of memory bandwidth. I've also been told that there are as well increases for things such as uh, color compression, but those details are very sketchy right now and we can only wait and see. However, all of these changes total, at least according to the rumors thus far, means that we have drastically more pixel pushing power and up to double the geometry performance. And that's definitely one area that we have seen AMD fall behind on compared to, uh, let's say, Turing or even Pascal. Does that mean that you should rush out and pre-order these GPUs without review? No, of course not. But still, it is interesting. Uh, I'm going to be very curious exactly how these GPUs do fall compared to the RTX 2070. In my opinion, there's three potential possibilities here. The first is that uh, the Nave GPU is going to outperform the RTX 2070, assuming the pricing of 500 US dollars is accurate. So. AMD will outperform Turing, and that's why they're going for the 500 US dollar price point. The second possibility is that they are basically neck and neck, in which case it's going to come down to other things like do you have a brand loyalty, what's the power and heat consumption going to be like, and maybe AMD will do things to incentivize you to purchase Radeon, like have a really good bundles of games, or maybe the pricing that we've seen uh, from the Sapphire PR guy was actually incorrect. That's always a possibility as well. It's 399 for the RTX 2060 level of performance and uh, 499 US dollars for the RTX 2070 level of performance. The other possibility is that Nave could be a disappointment. And honestly, until we see reviews, we could only guess which of these uh, potential outcomes is true. While we're on the subject of AMD, it's really important that we discuss another leaked benchmark that has popped up online. And this one's actually from Sysoft Sandra. This benchmark is actually really, really puzzling because of a couple of different reasons. The core configuration here is just not being read most likely correctly. I'll get why in terms of the caches and stuff, stuff like that in just a moment. But it's even more weird because rather than the traditional uh, CPU ID string that we see where it'll be like a Z and blah, 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 and then eventually you'll see like an underscore and that'll be like the bass and turbo frequency that we all know and love, the recent sample has not been like this. In fact, it's very much like um, Tim Apisak uh, mentioned when he first linked to the 16-core engineering sample Ryzen 3000 part, which essentially means that we're in some questionable territory here. We don't really know what... Uh, we can't just look at the ID and then get a good understanding of what the CPU actually is. But let's have a look at the results themselves, and more importantly, let's try and figure out what the heck's going on here. So the result ID for this particular CPU is 100, lots of zeros, 31, hyphen, 0, 02. Well, that certainly tells me a lot of information. Um, we've, we know it's an AMD processor. <laughs> so, um, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's kind of my point, by the way, in case you can't get it. Uh, we basically can discern nothing from the uh, string anymore. So goodness knows what's going on here. So it's a 12 thread part. So there's two possibilities. One, it's a 12-core CPU with SMT disabled. I would be surprised if that's the case, particularly when we look at the cache. I'll discuss that in just a second. Or the other possibility is it's six processor cores with SMT times two. So we have two threads per core. The base clock is running at 3.3 gigahertz, assuming that is being read correctly. And your guess is as good as mine, whether that's true, it's possible some of this or a lot of this is being obfuscated now we have six times two hundred uh, five hundred and twelve excuse me kilobytes of level two cache which is super duper puzzling because it theoretically means we have six cpu cores we know that uh at least if mts so far uh, continues to be how we understand it and also based upon the previous zen architecture each cpu core has uh, 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Okay, so we're good there. 
Another puzzling thing is the amount of level 3 cash. So the amount of level 3 cash on this chip is really weird. It's a very good possibility it is not being reported correctly or it is a line of processors that we don't know about. Maybe it's an, an engineering sample that possibly they've disabled it or something like that. And honestly, your guess is as good as mine. And if you're wondering why I'm so confused, let's let's take a look at this, shall we? Let's look at the weirdness. So the amount of level 3 cache here is listed as 4 times 8 megabytes, but that's contrary to what we know the Zen 2 architecture should list. The Zen 2 architecture should be listing 4 times 16 megabytes. And to add to the confusion, in theory, this is a two chiplet design. It's a two chiplet part. So that means what? We only have three cores per chiplet? And how does even that break down further? Do we have... Um, two CCXs which have two cores each so two times two is obviously four and then another CCX that only has what one core enabled like how does that even how does that even like add up in terms of the core count and level three cache it's just really bizarre and if you compare that to a different CPU that we know about we'll use the uh, 32 core ROM processor that leaked online. So this is a 32 core part, 64 threads. Okay, that makes sense, right? And looking at the amount of level 2 cache, that also tallies up rather nicely. 32 times 512 kilobytes of level 2 equals, you know, 32 cores. Great. Furthermore, we have 8 times 16 megabytes of level 3 cache. That also makes an awful lot of sense, given what we know about the Zen 2 architecture. If you break down the chiplet slash CCXs and how level 3 cache is split up between them, that just works out rather nicely. So the question is then, what the heck is going on with the cache configuration of this particular CPU? I can only say that it's really weird. We are looking at a processor that scores incredibly well. Just for the sake of argument, the overall score is listed uh, with this particular benchmark, anyway, it's just Sandra at 196.8 GOPS. Uh, compare that to an overclocked 2600 uh, six core processor, so same number of processor cores theoretically, and that's scoring around 190 GOPS. So what we have here is a processor which is actually outperforming a pro the previous generation by a substantial margin. And that CPU is running at a higher clock frequency as well. My particular thoughts regarding these results, honestly, it's very difficult to know if they are accurate or not, because it's possible that these results have basically been made by AMD to troll us. <laughs> to be totally honest with you, it's highly possible that that's the case, just to throw us off the trail. Um, because, as I said, a number of these results just look kind of suspicious. But there are rumours that there are six core processor parts that have been floating around to motherboard vendors as well. So if that's the case, maybe that's one of them. I'm going to be very curious to see exactly what the rundown of SKUs is going to be from AMD, how they're going to segment the different product lineups, and also what the prices are going to be, particularly if we don't see uh, Threadripper launch at any time soon. I wonder if AMD are going to uh, decide to price the CPUs at a higher price point than perhaps we may have expected the 16-core CPUs to set, because ultimately you can argue that they basically replaced many of the CPUs in a traditional high-end desktop system. Like, you know, if you have a 16-core processor, let's even say it goes to 4.5 gigahertz, just making it nice and simple for a moment. That is going to smash most workloads just without any question, like 3D rendering, video encoding. It's going to be really interesting to see exactly what AMD are capable of uh, putting out with Zen 2. Anyways, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff like share and comment and subscribe because it really does help out the channel. 
You can also find us down below on Patreon, as well as some Amazon affiliate links, as well as social medias. So if you want to get in touch with us, well, you know how to do it. You can also email me directly if you have a tip or a leak that you want to send to me. That is Paul at redgamingtech.com. Once more, that is Paul at redgamingtech.com. But take care of yourselves. Bye for now. Thank you.